Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and happy birthday to me. This video will be publicly released on September 9th of 2024, and that will be the channel's third birthday. And so I thought I would take this opportunity to uh, quickly address the audience out there, give a quick update on state of the channel as we go into the fourth year. What can we expect? Okay, how far have we come? And then also, I want to talk about this question of value in audio, because this has been a topic of conversation that's come up in the comment section of my videos and in other places a lot of times. And so I want to be explicit in this video about how I evaluate value. All right, so we will tackle the question of worth for what it's worth, okay, at least in audio. So let's go ahead and do shameless self-promotion, and then we will dig into the rest of that. Hello. I'm one of the reasons that Wave Theory can't spend all of his money on audio gear. He wants you to know that your support is vital for keeping the channel running. So if you enjoy Wave Theory's bussin, review riz, and no cap review style, and want to encourage him to stay in the basement so I don't have to listen to his dad jokes as much, like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also send him a donation on PayPal or sign up for the Patreon. Links are in the description. Now on to the review. So it's been quite a whirlwind of three years. I uh, started writing reviews of audio gear during the COVID pandemic. Uh, you know, everyone was in lockdown and, and so forth. And I was uh, just sitting there like twiddling my thumbs a little bit. What do I do? And I just started writing about the audio gear that I had. I have been in the hobby, uh, you know, with audio and have, you know, uh, done on an amateur level. I have worked with pro audio gear, you know, since like I was 10 years old and so forth. And, you know, so I just started writing about the things that I had on hand to listen to at the time. And I started posting them on places like Hi-Fi Guides forums and then eventually HeadFi. And they became quite popular. And those writings became rather popular. And I had numerous people telling me that you should probably go to YouTube and get to the, the audience there. And then, you know, like, I was like, does the world really need to see this, right, um, all the time? And, but anyway, on September 9th, 2021, I bit the bullet and started uploading some video reviews, and I have been doing that ever since. It has uh, become, you know, rather successful, because in the past three years, I have garnered over 10,000 subscribers. I am over 1.6 million total views on the channel. And uh, I just keep getting sent gear to review by companies, by retailers, by private individuals who loan me things, and they just want to hear my opinions on them, and they want you to hear my opinions on them. So it has been a really rewarding but also very humbling experience because I did not expect it to grow like this. When I first started writing, I didn't think anyone would care what I had to say about any of this because I'm just a guy who listens to this stuff for fun. I am not an audio professional. I don't get paid to play an instrument. I don't get paid to create music or to mix music or anything like that. I mean, I have run church sound systems for like 15 years in my younger years and that sort of thing and, uh, and have been a hobbyist. But again, I had, had no formal training on any of that. So I am a bit blown away and a bit humbled yet and sometimes still pinch myself wondering if this is all really happening. Um, but it does appear to be, right? Um, so, um, so thank you to all of the audience out there. I mean, obviously none of this would be possible without you. Uh, I have been really touched and humbled and encouraged by all of the support out there. So a heartfelt thank you to the audience out there. Moving into the fourth year of this channel, like the, the goals remain mostly the same. I just want to inform the viewers out there about the audio products that are on the market so that they can make informed buying decisions. I have always considered you, the audience, to be my client or the people who I work for. I don't work for manufacturers. I don't work for retailers. I work for you. 
All right, I want um, like the product that I create is ultimately for you, the consumer. So you have my pledge to continue to be as honest and as straightforward as I can be in my evaluations of audio gear, to be as um, unaffected as I can humanly be by the pressures of affiliate links and you know all of those other kinds of things that can in at times create conflicts of interest. You have my pledge to do my best efforts to cut through all of that and just continue to be honest and straightforward with you. Okay, so that said, let, uh, let me put some of that honesty into practice here in terms of, let me share some thoughts on how it is that I evaluate value on this channel because value, is a piece of gear worth its asking price is a tough question. It's also a very subjective question. And so I'm going to try to explain a little bit here, like where I'm coming from and what criteria I am using to make my evaluations on statements like, I think piece X is in fact worth price Y. Okay. How do I come to that conclusion? Or maybe even more importantly, when I say, that a piece is not worth its asking price. Why am I saying that and what does that really mean? Okay. So quick recap then, if you're not familiar, like what are my listening goals? Like as a listener, what am I listening for when I am evaluating gear? And for the most part, I am looking for and listening for realism, naturalism, realism, okay? Does it sound convincingly real? Okay, at least as my ears and this brain, which I am stuck with, okay, uh, at least as they interpret real to sound. And the, like, just the underlying philosophical basis for that goal, at least for me, is that here, like I have always interpreted sound systems audio gear and that thing, at least particularly at home, but this part is true of all audio gear to some extent, that is to reproduce sounds that were, you know, real world sounds that were created and captured in some place at some time in history. If you're listening to recorded music, that recorded music is an assembly of sounds that really happened somewhere. Okay, and been at some time. And so there's a benchmark right there. What did it sound like in that place at that time? And then all of this gear that we have, at least in, in my view, is in a lot of ways like trying to, to some extent, reproduce that sound. So how well does the gear do that? And how does it go about doing that? Okay, um, is, and I don't mean how does it go about doing that from an engineering standpoint, as in like, are we talking about a Delta Sigma deck versus an R2R deck or a class A amp versus a class AB amp versus a class D amp? Okay, that's not really what I mean by how does it go about it. I'm talking about how is that piece doing sound things? What are its sonic attributes that are um, that makers? attempt at saying, here's how we recreate those sounds that happened in a real place at a real time. Okay. So when I'm listening to all of those, I am just measuring it against my understanding of what the real world sounds like. So on this channel, you hear me say a lot of times, like I use human voices and acoustic instruments a lot to evaluate like how realistic something is sounding. And I use like the analogy of being in a, in a concert hall listening to a symphony a lot as I like describe spatial presentations and that sort of thing. And to me, I, I mean, I do that because if the gear can reproduce the tone, the timbre, and in the case of like a symphony in a concert hall, the space, of the sound in those contexts, then I have a pretty high degree of trust that it is going to faithfully reproduce a 
highly distorted and equalized by intent electric guitar sound, okay? Or like any kind of artificial sound that comes along, it's going to reproduce those well, you know, um, just because it has shown, the gear has shown that it can reproduce sounds that were naturally produced somewhere at some time. Okay. So then relating that to value then, I have observed now, I mean, and you can go back and you can look at my video history just to get an idea of both the breadth and the depth of gear that I have been able to listen to over these past few years. And I have observed that generally speaking, performance does correlate with price with one caveat that we're going to get to in a moment. Um, right here, and that's with headphones above $2,000. Things can get a lot more hit and miss there, okay? But generally speaking, and I've really only noticed that with headphones so far, um, amps, DAX, uh, you know, source gear and that kind of thing, they just seem to keep going up and up and up in quality um, with price, generally. So there is a, a, and I'll say generally a loose correlation between the price of gear and its sonic performance. There's not necessarily a correlation between the price of gear and the number of features that it has. Because here in audio, generally it's more about the sound and there's often just enough features to appeal to who the manufacturer thinks is gonna be their primary audience. So, like, you know, a lot of high-end gear, like high-end source gear, you know, DAX, preamps, amplifiers, those kinds of things, they tend to be rather feature light. They don't often have a lot of bells and whistles on them, but they do sound pretty fantastic more often than not. Okay. And so, like, as I talk about value then, sometimes features and flexibility factor in. That's usually more at the lower end of the price range where, you know, being, you know, kind of a Swiss army knife piece of gear can be an advantage at times. But more, mostly I'm evaluating sonic performance when I talk about value. So that's an important piece to keep in mind here too. All right, beyond that, the way that it makes most sense to me, and again, this is just my take, right? You should not just take my word for it. You need to use your, most importantly, your own ears and brains to uh, figure out this value thing and what the question of worth is to you. And then also I can only make general comments about worth and value because I'm not in your listening chair. I don't know what your specific needs are beyond, you know, the hearing and all of that, which is going to be different than mine. Like what's your use case? What, hole in your setup are you trying to fill like that's going to be unique for every person in every situation so all of my comments are also as general as i can make them because i'm not you right so that's another thing that you need to uh to keep in mind here all right but value of an audio product generally speaking is an emergent property of the market Okay, the context of the market at the time. What does that mean? Well, if you listen to, you know, half a dozen, uh, let's just say headphone amps as an example, half a dozen headphone amplifiers, say between 200 and 300 US dollars. Okay, then you can start to get a picture of like, well, what should our expectations be of a headphone amplifier that costs two to three hundred dollars? All that. And so like the, the amount of performance that you're getting sonically for the price comes from just that market context. These amps are all kind of clustered together. They don't necessarily all sound the same, okay? But they have a set of technical qualities and abilities and the ability to drive headphones or, 
you know, whatever the piece does, that are all fairly similar-ish to each other, or maybe one of them has an outlier exception about it, like one of those amps is especially powerful, and it can drive the hi fi Min HE6 series really well, and the others can't, but maybe it's not as technically proficient as the others, it's just really powerful, right? So, but the point there is, is like the value, the question of worth becomes an emergent property of what those pieces are doing at that price point, right? And so for someone like me who has had the, you know, the fortune to hear a huge amount of gear at a wide variety of price points, I just, I feel like I have been able to get a, a reasonably good grasp on, although certainly not a perfect grasp, of like what are the reasonable expectations for headphone amp performance at $500, for DAC performance at $2,500, okay, or headphone performance at $4,000. We're gonna come back to that one, okay? Um, and so that's just kind of an insight, again, as to how I'm doing this and what I'm thinking about and why I'm thinking about the question of value here um, as we head into the fourth year of the channel. One way, and then let's come back to the challenge area, because one area where this is, like, one of the reasons I'm making this video right now at this point in time is because I admit I am having a lot of difficulty fairly evaluating value for headphones, specifically headphones, because I'm not noticing this with source gear, but particularly headphones, above 2000 US dollars. I did a video back in the spring of this year, or early summer, anyway, earlier this year, where I looked at the Hi Feynman HE1000 SE, the head headphone two and the Mod House tungsten double-sided, because there again, there was a group of headphones that were at that time about 2000 US dollars. The, the HE1000 SE is now like 1700, which just continues to make that an insane value. There I go, okay. Evaluating value, All right? But those three just performed so well, like at their price. And like, crucially, they also performed better than what was cheaper than them. So like, that's another aspect of evaluating value is like, again, as price goes up, do we get an increase in performance? And with those three, they sound better than anything that's cheaper than them. At least they do to my ears, okay? And the other part of it, and again, why I wanted to make this video is like those three also sound just as good or better than a lot of headphones that exist, even up to like four, five thousand dollars. Okay, and that's where like and, and that's why I'm having to give a lot of intentional thought to this question of value, because to these ears, Headphones above $2,000 get very, very hit or miss in terms of whether or not they are actually worth the money from a sonic perspective to these ears. Okay. Um, for my ears, and if it were my money, and sometimes it has been, like the hi fi men Susvara and the Focal Utopias, any of them, the original, the 2020, or the, the new 2022 model, new-ish at this point, 22 model, are like standout performers that their performance does in fact command their top of the line price point, okay? Like it's, you know, you can, yes, they are expensive, but they sound incredible. They, on the right source gear for them, they do, some of the best jobs of recreating that real world sound okay, on, on the market right now. Close to them, to my ears, would be the Odyssey LCD5. Um, and you know, you can also put some E stats up there, something I've heard. The uh, Stax SRX9000 is also excellent and up there just as an example um, of headphones that can do this. Okay, and are worth the money. But then there are others that I just, like, it's just very unclear to me what you're getting. And, you know, you've, if you've watched my channel, you've, you've heard me say this. Like, Meze and Abyss are two brands that I struggle with up above that price point. And they have, you know, made me ask the question, what, how do we fairly evaluate value up at that price? Because sonically speaking, 
they're not particularly close to the Susfara, the Utopia, the SRX 9000, the uh, LCD 5. Okay, um, they're just not up there. Okay, they and you can watch my reviews as to the uh, to get the inside reasons as to why that is. So, but the that category is making it tough to use my grouping criteria of, hey, we have a bunch of units clustered in price that all kind of have similar-ish tech, overall technical abilities. Maybe they trade off a little bit here and there and are tuned a little bit differently than each other, which is to be expected. But generally speaking, their entire Sonic package kind of lands right in this range. But headphones are just not doing that above $2,000. Like that range is really large to my ears. And so, and, it's the, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to, to do about that. And I, so I'm just, I'm admitting and being honest and forthright with evaluating value up there is really tough. And I know that some people bring in build quality and aesthetics up there. Um, and I get that. But again, I, I mean, if we're talking about Sonics to these ears and to this brain, um, there's a big, there's a very difficult to pin down value question up in that price with headphones. And I hope that I have laid out some criteria as to like how I am coming to those determinations. So um, I'll go ahead and leave it there, I think. Um, I hope this was helpful, and I hope that this helps you, the audience, understand me as a reviewer a little bit better and where I'm coming from. But thank you all again for all the support over these past three years, and I am excited about continuing to build this channel and just learn more about audio gear. So thanks for going on this journey with me, and as always, enjoy the music.